What's up guys, this is Alex from Xtrades, back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Um, I just want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, this will be our fifth video. Um, and Before I get into it, I just want to throw that out there. Um, we are trying to grow the YouTube channel a little bit more. And if you know any bit of Xtrades for years, you know we've been putting in work for a long time. And we really want to get that exposure. So if you could leave a like, a comment, maybe even subscribe, uh, that would be great. Um, we want our stuff to start hitting the algorithm a little bit more, you know, get the education out there and, um, you know, get the exposure that, you know, all of us deserve to have a growing community. Well, let's go ahead and get into, um, setup number one here. Um, this is XPEV. Um, this is a Chinese electric car company. As you can see, it's extremely oversold. Um, weekly RSI is, I mean, probably the lowest it's ever been. Let's see, it's at... Um, let's get the data up real quick. So RSI at 2788, um, just ridiculously low. It's under 30, so you know it's oversold. But you can see it's starting to poke out of this downtrend a little bit. Um, I really think that could, um, if you zoom out a little bit here, this is extremely far-fetched. Um, but eventually, if it does break out, I think it could get back up to this um, 17. 11, which is like around when it IPO'd, uh, support from when it IPO'd. Obviously, that could take a long time, um, you know, with rising rates and, you know, inflation. Uh, you know, high growth companies, you know, they're not going to go up instantly. You know, these things could take time, but you will see a lot of dead cat bounces, um, similar to what you see right here. But yeah, so it's poking another downtrend. I, I think it looks nice for um, some upside momentum. If we go to the daily time frame, and we zoom in a little bit, but you can see it is poking out indeed. Um, the upside would maybe be invalid if it did go back within the downtrend, like I always preach. Uh, we had a couple of setups last week that actually did this. I think like Riot did it, um, and you know they do happen. So you know every every setup you try is not going to be perfect, and um, you know you you want to have other options too. You know so that's why I do at least five setups out of my list of 250 names. If you guys know, I go through 250 names uh, to get, you know, the most solid ones. And usually they're, they pay pretty good. Um, it just depends. Last week, you know, we, we did have the FOMC meeting, so setups weren't as good last week. Um, I maybe took one. I think I took, like, CVX puts. Um, otherwise, I've been trading, you know, SPX and sticking to day trades and stuff. But, yeah, so XPEV, breaking out this downtrend line. Let's see what we could do for price targets. So you're gonna have a top tick resistance right here at 853. Um, next level would probably be like this peak right here, 1018. So short term, you're looking for it to get over 853 um, in order to get the tens. Uh, stop loss, you're looking at you know if it goes back within the downtrend, like I said, or 52 week low, which is you know below six dollars. So yeah, we'll be looking for calls on that if it did indeed like gap down Monday or something. And go back within the downtrend you know you could look at puts for a day trade as well but um the focus right here if we go to the weekly chart again we do have um see this KD, kdj oscillator down here it is curling up and giving positive uh momentum so it is giving a buy signal and we see the other one right here you know you got an early buy signal here look what happened before you know ran up real nice um right here gave a short-term signal topped out right there Stayed in a buy signal for a little bit, and then um, had a false, you know, breakdown signal right here before going higher. So yeah, just keep an eye on that KDJ. Um, this is extremely early, so you could be, you know, could be getting a good price right now on XPEV. So we're gonna be looking at calls on that. Um, this would probably be a good swing trade. It's extremely oversold on the higher time frames. Um, if you want to get, you know, calls a couple months out, it, that could be a good idea. Um, if you're looking for a day trade, you're really looking for that 853 level to get taken out. Next, we'll go into Airbnb. Um, one of my favorite growth stocks, honestly. Um, I traded this a lot more in the past when you know when the market was still in you know a hot money market and uh, there's a lot more money being thrown around. But you know now we're you know in a rising interest rate environment, so stuff changes, consumer habits change, um, etc. But beautiful um, rally-based rally demand zone here. 
So you got your base candle right there, circle it for you, rally, makes a base, rally. Um, and now it's coming back down. This is the first time it's been tested, um, thus resulting in this nice bullish hammer. Um, for price targets, you're looking at about, let's get the magnet back on so I can get the precise one. Price targets are looking at about 99.71, or otherwise, you know, like $100 even. But um, let's see. So you had a nice hammer, probably come up, probably reject like right off that level um, before anything. If it can get through that, you know, you'd be looking at this little gap fill, probably fill the gap, then find resistance. Um, I can even draw the gap up for you. It's pretty small, not too big. That gap, all right, and that little gold zone, it's our gap. So really big imbalance area. There's a lot of, um, a lot of sell, selling going on right here so you know it could fill back up and maybe try to get back up to the gap but um yeah really nice confirmation at the demand zone stop loss you're looking at you know under demand zone low um that would need to probably be the max depending on your you know contracts stop loss um could also be you know at the all-time low um that would be more you know that'd be a little bit riskier and if you have a higher risk tolerance but could be good so yeah, I'm going to be looking at calls in this. Um, not really seeing a downtrend line in the way or anything like that. It, you know, it is just a nice counter trend reversal trade to the upside. Next, we'll go into Ford, ticker symbol F. So this is like a mixed bag. Um, you do have test number one, test number two. This is test three, so this could be given a pretty good short. Um, so I'd probably be looking at puts on this one. Um, third test is usually a good uh, starting point for you know any trend line if it's uptrend line or downtrend line test number three is actually what validates it so you do have a test three here which resulted in a rejection so that could give you more follow-through um, price target you're looking at this pivot low right here so if it goes to pivot low probably try to like curl up right about there um, if indeed it does if we gap up for any reason on Monday um, it could be anything, you know, the dollar, you know, getting trashed on Friday, that that could be good. But right now you can see, you know, it is up a little bit. So anything could happen. If it does decide to gap up, though, and opens up outside the downtrend line, you know, there is a good chance it can break out. And um, if it did go upside, you'd be looking at this 200, you know, EMA right there as a next potential resistance. Small gap right here. Supply zone right here. So just some stuff to look out for. But yeah, otherwise this downtrend line's really nice. Could give a nice setup for puts. Just wait for confirmation, of course. And you know, remember these are just ideas. You know, these are, these are not like recommendations or anything like that. Um, I just want you to be able to look at this, look at stuff in the past, realize technical analysis works um, if you do it right. And doing it right means waiting for confirmation. So um, Monday, you want to see it open inside the downtrend line before taking puts or anything like that. If it goes outside, obviously you might not want to look at it. Next symbol, we had Adobe last week, but we never got a buy signal on this one. If you remember, we're looking at 30 or uh, 330.58. So we're looking for a break over 330.58 to get a gap fill. We never um, got our alert that we set right here. You see the little timer. Never got an alert, so um, we weren't able to trade this. Um, did find resistance at the 50 EMA like I thought it might. Um, so we were looking for it to get over the 50 EMA and this level first. Um, it was not able to do that. But now we are in a counter trend type trade here. You got a very slight slope uptrend, nothing too crazy. Um, you got bottom support here, 274.85. You know, we could maybe see it curl up. Try to curl up off the trend line. Try to fill up this sell imbalance area. Maybe head back up to the 50 EMA. We'll have to see. Um, but I would be looking for calls on this personally. You don't want to short at lows. Um, seems a little risky, even though it, it has worked a lot for 2022. You'd want to wait for it to get under the 52 week low with good confirmation of a daily candle. Um, so if it for some reason closed under 274.85 with a good daily candle, you can maybe look at shorts so of that because at least you waited for confirmation. But yeah, price targets, I mean, there's really no resistance until this 330 area, but obviously that's being a little crazy. 
um, if you're day trading. If we go down to the short time frame and it does decide the whole level, you got small resistance at 291. And um, yeah, that's that's really it. Just that 291 level, and then you start looking for you know resistance at the you know short term moving averages and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, this could be a good counter trend trade. RSI is not completely oversold yet on the daily. Uh, if we go to the weekly, it's pretty low still. Um, we don't have a buy signal on the KDJ yet, so you would be a little bit early on this maybe. Um, so keep that in mind before uh, you know considering this setup. Realize that you know you are going against the trend, but um, those those can pay. So if you're getting premiums that are cheap, um, and you're able to you know sell like mid range, like you know three hundred dollars or something like that, and you will have a good premium increase if you buy down here. Next, CRM. So this is another counter trend. Um, hasn't touched this trend line you see yet. So this is like a trend line support, but we do have a main pivot point support right here at 137.59. Um, you'd be looking for a confirmation of it opening above this level and holding to you know fill that little cell imbalance area back up. Maybe head back to this little 50 EMA or the supply. Um, if we zoom down to the four hour, uh, technically this little area right here, this lower low, this is actually a um, drop base rally demand zone on the four hour. And if you went to the daily, it's pretty much the same as well. So yeah, it's it's, it's just regular you know support, um, but also a demand zone since it led to this big buy imbalance before going higher. So yeah, another counter trend call trade. You'd be looking for upside on this one. Stop loss is obvious. You need under 137.59. Um, or maybe even if it broke under this trend line support. So yeah, another counter trend. So Adobe and CRM, two counter trend call trades. Um, be careful on those. Consider the risks. Um, maybe go a little bit smaller, you know, start in small, add later, uh, whatever works for you. But next, we're going to be going into the ES. So this is the S&P 500. I've been showing the futures lately instead um, of doing the ETFs. Last week, we were focused on this trend line. Uh, Test number three, um, Sunday night it opened outside the trend line, but we said, you know, we'd be looking for it to either hold outside or if it goes back within, that, you know, could give bears something to eat. And um, it, it, it indeed did. So the FOMC decision, they raised 0.75 basis points for interest rates. Um, General Powell made it clear that they're probably going to have to raise more. So um, in the last meeting, he said there would be at least two more. This time, he seemed a little bit more unsure about how many more they would do. So, um, we'll have to see where the week takes us. Not really seeing anything specific on the SPY or the ES S&P 500 here. Um, broke this little uptrend line, rejected the downtrend line. This made a wedge. Uh, went back under October peak support. One argument bulls do have is not only a falling dollar on Friday, but the VIX also went lower too. So VIX is not supporting this downtrend um, at all. So VIX keeps declining. S&P is also declining. Uh, and if you didn't know, VIX is all based off S&P options. So um, it's a volatility index. It's not like, you know, it's not like, you know, religion or anything. Like it, it's not something you want to just totally abide by, but it is a good indicator to keep a watch for volatility. But um, yeah, you see, we do have a little rally base, rally demand. It did try to hold up. So look for this zone to hold up. Um, maybe we can head back to this downtrend line, or probably try to reject right there. But the main thing is we get back over this October peak right here and also be able to get over um, 3,928. So that's our peak resistance right now. So we need to get over October peak, get over the downtrend line, and get over this peak right here. Um, we also need to hold this demand zone. Be bearish if we went under this little peak right or this little um, pivot right here. Um, so we definitely want to hold, you know, 3,600 minimum. Um, but yeah, you can see it's just kind of choppy. No, no setup at the moment. Could have traded puts off this last week. Um, yeah, gave a really good confirmation actually for puts. But yeah, so nothing crazy on the S&P. 
Uh, just look at look for this demand zone to hold, and uh, that's about it. Oh yeah, seasonality. So seasonality, um, we're looking at November seventh through November eleventh, and this is a midterm year. Um, you can see that the S&P is averaging a 0.33% return in these days for this week coming up. So not seeing um, an, a dip average or anything like that. Um, so, you know, it, we could be looking at, you know, a little bit of upside. Um, nothing too crazy. Uh, we didn't really follow the seasonality last week. So um, this is also not religion or law. This is just something to go by um, based off history to kind of maybe give you a little bit more of a um, positive reliance to your bias. So yeah, just a little 0.33% average return. That's for all these midterm years, the last 72 years. Um, so yeah, just something to keep in mind. I don't really see an average dip until next week. So um, maybe don't go crazy on the puts or anything like that. Um, maybe stick to day trades. I don't I don't really like shorts right here for the S&P or anything like that. Um, it need to be at a downtrend line, um, flushing 52-week lows and stuff like that. And even flushing the 52-week lows is a really hard trade for puts. Because um, every time I get a new low, it bounces. So <laughs> you got to be really careful. And we got a little battery problem here. All right. Should be done soon anyways. So NQ. Looks like we have a downtrend line projected super hard. You saw that last week we did have the inverse head and shoulders. Let me find that tool. Actually, I don't even need it. Let's do this. So we had that inverse head and shoulders. It did not get confirmed. I threw that out there that this pattern was not confirmed yet um, until it got over this resistance line and the downtrend line. So it created a new supply, rejected supply, rejected downtrend, and now you can see we're at this 52 week low again, um, right around the same area. So we'll be looking for that to hold up. Maybe head back to the uptrend line or the downtrend line and probably reject about there. Um, I wouldn't expect this to happen this week or anything like that. This could just be another, you know, decision week. Um, a lot of people are just starting to price in the FOMC meeting and um, figure out what the hell to do with their portfolio. So otherwise we need to be holding this 52 week low or it could flush lower. Um, so yeah, look for support to be made down here. Um, bears are going to be looking for that level to get flushed. So nothing crazy this week. No no trend line set up or anything like that. Um, this could maybe make a good counter trend for day trades. But otherwise, you know, just, just be careful. RTY, small and mid caps. Last week we went over the Dow. This week we'll go over the small and mid caps. Um, all right, so here's our Fibonacci retracement. As you can see, it retraced about 61.8% of its move from this high to this low. Broke out the downtrend, found resistance near the 200 EMA on the daily, now holding up the daily 50 EMA. And you'd be looking for it to hold up here for sure. Um, otherwise, it, it can flush a little bit lower to um, the 52-week low area. So yeah, no crazy setup on this either. Um, just look for it to base out on this 38.2 fib, which is 1794. Same level as last week. We're looking for it to break over. We want to see it reclaiming this um, to head back to this little, you know, 1800s high. And VIX. All right, so VIX. This is an interesting one. So let's get into the data first. So our Friday's close. Um, Ended up being 24.56. That ended up giving us a value of not much different than it was before, but it's now at 26.24. So we got an average close in 2022 for 26.24. So 26.24 is our average. We have now closed multiple times below the average. So this means you're getting premiums um, pretty much at a pretty normal discount. And, um, you know, the, the only thing that's weird is that it's not matching up with any dips. So the market's selling off and the VIX is selling off, which is very strange. Usually it's a, you know an inverse correlation, but it does have to do with supply and demand of options. So obviously people are buying options in a different way than is uh, matching the price action. So it could be a lot of people you know weighing towards calls. It could be a lot of people um, dumping their puts, etc. But yeah, so just keep looking for the VIX to fall maybe, um, which could help us rally. Uh, you'd be looking for it to fall down here and hold up at this 2264 level. 
Um, obviously, if it keeps staying under this, I would I'd be careful with shorting. Um, and that's, that goes for any day. It doesn't matter if the market's selling off and the VIX is selling off. Maybe, maybe don't even trade them because, you know, that's not a good indication that, you know, the market will keep dumping. Um, if it does, in fact, get back over the 2022 average, you know, and close over it a couple times, you know, you can start looking at puts again because that means the volatility is above average. And um, people could start to, start to be pricing in a dump in the stock market. So just something to keep in mind. 2624 is our current. This gets updated every day, but look for that move down to 2264, and uh, that's it. If that falls, you know, it could go back to 19s, but that's in the timeline. It's not probably going to happen this week. Next in our last, this is the dollar. So the U.S. dollar had the most insane dump on Friday. This is a 1.94% dump. Um, I looked at all these candles, and I'm not seeing any other day where the dollar sold off this hard. Um, just insane. And the fact that the market didn't rally super hard off this is pretty crazy. Um, it did have a good close, maybe closed up 1% or something, 1.24% maybe, which is pretty good. But a 1.8% dollar move, I've seen the market go higher, like 3 4% on the NASDAQ when the dollar was only down 1%. So I thought that was interesting. And um, it's all due to the Friday jobs report um, from all that. That's, that's what the uh, volatility came from. So... The Friday jobs report was very mixed. Um, some people could even argue that people are not losing their jobs yet, so the Fed's tightening is not working. But then some could argue that there's signs that, you know, the job market is slowing and there's not as much growth as before. So um, I thought it was very interesting. There's a lot of push and pull, back and forth, tug of war. So, um, but for the dollar, you're looking for... This level to hold up. We want to see 110.05 holding uh, for bears. If bears want to eat more, they're going to want to see the dollar holding up, heading back to the trend line. Um, bulls, you're going to want to see it get under 110.05 and even break the same longer term trend line um, as before. You know, we've been talking about this longer term trend line for a while now. Um, we want to see it get back under that for, for bulls for sure. But you can see, I mean, it's holding up the 50 EMA real nice and, um, you know, that could make it risky for us if, you know, the dollar opens up this high tomorrow. Um, it could make bulls skeptical. So, I mean, you can just see how it's trading now. Uh, currency traders are buying it. So, uh, futures are down a little bit. So, maybe a little hangover from the Friday jobs report. People are realizing that, you know, maybe the data wasn't that good. But um, should make it for an interesting week. So, I'll go over again. We got XPIF calls that we're looking at. Um, a, B, and B, we're looking at calls. F, we're looking at puts. Um Maybe calls on the breakout if it wants to work out. Adobe counter trend calls, uh, CRM counter trend calls. So, yeah, ho hopefully it's another good watch list. Um, last week it, I wasn't that impressed with the how the setups turned out, but I mean they're not all gonna hit. So, uh, just look for confirmation. Take the ones that look the best and trade safe, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna keep dropping them every week. Um, you know, even if the setups, you know. Maybe it didn't work last week. It doesn't matter. We're, we keep going. We keep fighting forward. Um, we keep looking for those quality ones. And, you know, they will pay. Um, time in the market beats, beats time, timing the market. So, um, yeah, I hope we have a great week, guys. And thank you for watching. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe to our um, X-Trades YouTube channel. Um, it would mean the world to us. You know, we've been working real hard, you know, these past couple of years, um, getting the app out and... Um, you know, thank you to Kevin for everything he does, man. He's a great guy. He really cares about the community. So show him some love, show us some love and show our YouTube some love. Thanks guys.